All right, and welcome back to episode 015 of the OK Podcast, powered by the Strength Co. I'm your host, Grant Brogy, and I'm here in the beautiful upstate of South Carolina where spring has sprung, the flowers are blooming, the pollen has died down, um, summer's not here, but it's just around the corner, and we are recording live, but brought to you every Friday at 09 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, here in the studio with PJ and, you know, one five zero one five episodes in a row. We got to keep tradition because it seems to work. Uh, the current price of Bitcoin is seventy one thousand four hundred and thirty six dollars. How far is the block clock behind what you see online there? That's well, a great it's question. flashing right now. Well, I mean, we can't not just Bitcoin. I don't want to take your job away. Height. What's the block height? Let's look it up. Let's look it up. I know that we got to 72,000, I think 400 yesterday. For, for Bitcoin price. For Bitcoin price. The block height on this random website that I've been using is 838,377. Exactly wow. what the block clock says. So uh, we're going to keep shouting out Zach Copley for sending us that clock because um, apparently it's down to the, I mean, you can't, Google can't even beat it. Nah, I mean, yeah. the block height just is what it is. It's it, like, it's like time. It's, it's like real, but I didn't know if this thing was lagging. That's a good question. But I mean, it gave the same number you pull off, uh, yeah, some I'm, random website, as you said, I guess it's all connected to the internet and Bitcoin lives there. So yeah, the internet where you can find all the lifting information you've ever wanted. Only the truth on the well, internet. Only the truth on the internet. Um, so yeah, we're here. Episode zero one five. We have a guest tonight. We'll introduce him later, coming out of sunny Florida. Uh, the guys will be on here shortly. i um, trying to think what we've done this week that's different from last week. Hmm. Um, let oh. me think. Let me think before you pull it up. Okay, uh, I won't tell you. We did some clips from the OK Podcast. Okay. Okay. Um, what, did, what did we release on the Strength Co. YouTube? We released a clip about... Oh, not being fat. Uh, oh yeah, well we did the not being fat. Yeah, that was a good. Or one. does lifting make you fat? So right, to speak. right. Because yeah. everybody's like, starting strength made me fat. Right, right, right. Great, you made me fat. Uh, that's a good one. You should check it out. We we did a video on building the ultimate home gym, where to splurge and where to save. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then we released a, a an infomercial about the best power lifting meet you've never heard of. That's right, the Lift Hard Live Easy Classic coming up in July by our friends over at Massonomics. And I will say, last week. You know, I made a comment about the um, underpaid and underrated podcast, sister podcast, Massonomics. Yes. And guess who's a guest Who? coming up in August? You. First name starts with Grant. Last name sounds like Brogy. Sounds familiar. Uh, yeah. So that worked. Um, so in the sense of naming out podcasts and getting called upon, um, Mr. Rogan. Yeah. All my friends in the South that don't listen to podcasts, when they hear I have a podcast, they always say to me, you got to get Rogan on. So I don't even want to come on your podcast. Come on mine because that's how that works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you just yeah. name it and claim it. You come to my podcast. Yeah, 475 by five. You name it, you claim it, and you get it. He's pretty jacked. Yeah. He lifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Along with some other things. But um, yeah. yeah, so that's what we did. And the um, I guess to we did talk a little bit about it um, with Senior Trace about not gaining weight while lifting, but we covered it. More extensively in a video because I thought it was a good topic. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's something I hear a lot about, but we did talk about that in terms of, and I, I was just talking with someone today. I had a client today, called in, did a consult. He's like, I love Starting Strength. I love your YouTube channel. I followed Starting Strength. I got stronger, but I also gained 15 pounds. And then my family was like, you look pudgy. And he's like, how do I fight pudgy. this? Yeah. I mean, clearly. He's well, not. What's wrong with Pudge? I mean, he's yeah. strong, I bet. Yeah. So, well, so we just talked about that and we talked about the same things we talked about in the video that if you lift heavy and you do full body exercises three times a week and you increase the load. Yep. Yes, you're going to be hungrier. Yep. What do you want to happen? Do right. you just want the load to go up on the bar? Eat whatever you want. Um, do you want to stay skinny? Don't eat enough. You know, do you want to put on some muscle? Are you always going to put on a little bit of fat with a little bit of muscle? Yes. But do you have to gain 20, 30, 40 pounds to increase your muscle mass? And the answer is no. Can you? Could it be a beneficial in the long run? Yes. But 
just because you're squatting and deadlifting does not mean that you have to have a belly. No, no. It does affect you though. I mean, fiance lifting update, even she's, she started on the program and she told me, I think two days ago, she said, why am I ravenously hungry? Yeah. And she, cause you're lifting. And for the record, she just doesn't eat that much. She's just always had a low appetite. And so this is weird for her to say like, why am I so hungry? I'm like, cause you just squatted yesterday. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was it. We tuned up her squat a little bit. Yeah, uh, Grant was very nice, and he we ran into Grant in the gym here in the Shock, upstate of South Carolina. Sh- shocking. Shocking. there's so many barbell gyms around here. <laughs> yeah, and, within uh, five minutes of within downtown. Within five minutes of downtown. Yeah, um, there we are. Yeah, but uh, he helped her with her squat form, which I was very appreciative of, because I try to help out, you know, but I'm not a coach. You know, nah, I you just, do. I just play one on TV. You you and do good. I think I can get someone 80% of the way there. Yeah, yeah. When she was. And I think the common mistake in the squat, most definitely. Well, so one is bar position. The hers bar, was high. Hers was high. I don't know if it's always high, but it was high that day. But if the bar's high, you can't low bar squat. I mean, if the bar's high, you have to balance. And so in her case, um, she was doing a weight that was pretty heavy. And so if the load is heavy, the bar is going to where it is in the back is going to t- determine back angle. So one, if the bar's high, you're going to be more vertical. If the bar's lower, you're going to be more horizontal, which is what we want because the loads more hips, more glutes, more hamstrings, more posterior chain, less pressure on the knee. Um, so we put the bar lower on her back and she was doing just fine. But then the number one mistake that I see with people squatting, or I would say the probably the most important after bar placement, because bar placement is going to dictate the whole thing, but it's the ability to actually think about using your hips versus lifting your back. And if the load is heavy, um, people want it, they want to be back standing up. And so the brain says, just lift my chest up and get upright. I don't care what it looks like. I just want to be upright and I want it to be over. Where the real answer is, is the further you sit back and the more you lean over, the more you've loaded the hips and then you can push your feet through the ground and drive your hips up. And so um, she wasn't far off, but she was missing out on a lot of hip drive Mm -hmm. and we fixed that pretty quick. And, you know, if, if you if you've been lifting on your own and someone corrects you. Um, someone intelligent, not just someone at crunch fitness, um, telling you to look up, but it looks up to go up. Yeah. If someone intelligently corrects you, there's a, there's a place to take some weight off the bar. Uh, it's more important to learn on the front end how to do things correctly because this is not rocket science. This is not that hard. Um, I don't think you need a coach for your entire life. Uh, you may like the programming. You may like to log in and know exactly what you're supposed to do. If you're getting training in person, you may like the fact that someone can yell at you or you know tell you what to do in real time. But the truth of the matter is, and this is coming from a guy that sells a coaching service, is if I'm any good at what I do, I should give you the tools to be able to help yourself over the long term. Do I think that having someone with more experience and more time under the bar and has seen a bunch of reps can get you somewhere faster over time? Yes, I do. But what I would say is spend the money up front when you hire a coach, learn how to do the movements, work hard. And if you do that, after three or four months, you should be able to go on your own and execute. And I really believe that. And uh, there's probably some coaches that would disagree with me on that because they just want to sell coaching services. But I'm telling you, there's three things you have to do in life in order for survival. You have to eat food, you have to sleep, and you have to lift weights. And just as I don't want to take a spoon and dip it into a carnivore salad and feed it to you. And just as when you're 85, I don't want to have to carry you into bed and lay you down to sleep at night. I want you to be able to walk to your squat rack yourself, unrack it, know how to hit depth and know how to drive your hips out of the bottom. So spend the money, spend the time up front learning how to do this because otherwise it can be frustrating because you will make progress. You will read a book like starting strength or maybe strong lifts or Jim Windler's five, three, one or whatever it is. And you'll start doing these lifts and you'll start adding weight and you're adding weight and you're adding weight and you're training yourself, which is great. You're still better off than doing nothing. And then you go, man, something hurts. Something's off. I'm watching the video. I'm not squatting depth. I better get a coach. You come in and get the coach and I start coaching you correctly. Nine times out of 10, I'm going to say take weight off. 
And it's usually something like, you know, you're not hitting depth in the squat or you don't know how to drive your hips. In uh, PJ's fiance situation, she was doing fine. She was working very hard, like limit sets of five. But I said, hey, we're not trying to set a powerlifting competition here. We're trying to get stronger for general health. Take 15 pounds off your squat implement these new things and then make small jumps and go forward. But, um, get coaching on the front end. Um, I thought about it and we'll probably talk a little bit about fishing later, but I thought about it this week. My brother and I went fishing. Uh, and the first day we went with a guide, we caught all kinds of fish. The second day we went on our own and we caught some fish. And, but I just thought about when I called my brother, who's still a client of mine after three years. So he's a guy that's like, I don't want to think about it. I want to log in. I want to see my workout. I just want to do it. But, um, when I told him, you know, he's been fly fishing for over a decade and I said, Hey, I want to fish. He said, don't worry about equipment. Don't go on your own, hire a guide. And that made a lot of sense to me because it's the same thing that I tell people. And so that's what I did. And you know, am I an expert fisherman? No, I'm terrible. But I can go out and catch a fish or two, albeit this big, which Connor likes to make fun of me that I take photos of small fish, but uh, Connor's from the Strength Co., one of her coaches. But my point is, it's like a little PR. Like, you know how to do it now. You know how to squat to depth. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, not the heaviest or the, the biggest fish in the pond or the river. You know, you're able to do it on your own. So, yeah, anyway. But I think you did a pretty good job on getting her i mean I got you, you, definitely, the there. you definitely taught her how to work hard like that was a pretty tough set that was i don't know that might just be kind of built in but uh she she did i did yell at her a little bit and go you know, to be like you got to push it and i remember first after a few workouts it started to get a little heavy and she goes on her deadlift i remember she lift, lifted one rep and it was really fast like sure. you just watch it and she was like i don't know if i got five that was hard i was like no you got it i would yeah. i would have told her if she didn't yeah, but like you. she totally got it and uh, we've had a couple experiences where she was like, there's no way. And then she does five perfectly and they're flying up. She's like, Just Oh, does it. you mean how I feel in the set isn't, is isn't indicative of how my set will go. And I'm like, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. You, you also gave her, you gave her two pieces of advice that I didn't expect you to give, which I'm, I'm sure are right. It was uh one drop the weight back down yeah. and learn correctly, which is not something I feel like I hear a lot of starting strength coaches say. And then the other thing is, you said take smaller jumps going forward. Yeah. I mean, I think in her, in her particular stand, uh, circumstance, like, so she was a little bit above parallel, but she was all chest out of the bottom. Yeah. Even though she was working hard. And so if you are at maximal loads trying to learn a new thing, it's very difficult. Yeah. Like you, yeah, it is. like you can't think you can't process. And so, and for, for the listeners, you know, we're talking, she was squatting 115. I told her to go back down to a hundred. Um, just so she could process that. And if you think about it, that may not sound like, oh, 15 pounds, that's not much. Relatively though. I mean, what's that percentage, math and pub public, 15%? Yeah, a little less than 15%. Yeah. And she's, I, the the context here, I think she weighs 105 or yeah, something. Yeah, there you go. She's very thin. So, and yeah. that's exactly what my point was, was like, hey, take the weight off. You're still squatting relatively body weight and then make small jumps and, you know, people often scoff at the small plates that we sell or they think it's silly, but a one and a quarter pound plate on each side is a two and a half pound jump. And if you are consistent and squatting, that's seven and a half pounds a week, Dude. 52 weeks in a year, you're basically at the block height by your 30th birthday. <laughs> yeah. Those two little 1.25s add up. Like they add up. You're doing your press. And you're trying to hit a PR by two and a half pounds. It yeah, it's a lot. It's serious. Yeah. So smaller jumps, I think, are really important, especially for everyone in the press and the bench press. Mm -hmm. I mean, ninety percent of the people I coach, I'm stalling on my press. I'm stalling on my bench press. And I mean, like new clients, like they've been trying to do this on their own, and they're frustrated by their press and the bench press. Yeah. How big a jump are you taking? Five pounds. It's too big of a jump. Yeah. That can't be all it is. Yes, it's exactly what it is. You're making too big of a jump. And that initial linear progression is so important to, to do that right. Uh, but if you weigh 100 pounds, 120 pounds, or you're, or you're really light, you know, you got to think about th that jump, that small jump matters even more. I mean, to yeah. be honest, she needs 0.5 pound plates yeah. for her press. 
Yeah, she does actually. Um, yeah. Or 0.75 pound plates. Those are the ones we'll probably make. Cause if you go any smaller than 0.75 pounds, it's hard to make with gray iron. But anyway, um, yeah, she's going to need something light, even lighter for her press and her bench press for a dude that, you know, weighs 180 pounds. I don't think you need a two and a half pound jump on the deadlift. I think it's, you know, if you weigh that much and you're deadlifting 340, if you, you know, do the percentages, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But if you're a female, um, especially if you're on the lighter side, there's a big difference between a, a two and a half pound jump and a five pound jump. Uh, there's a big difference between a two and a half pound jump and a one pound jump on your pressing and your upper body exercises. So, you have to pay attention to that um, and make sure you're not making too big of a jump. Mm -hmm. And if you're just getting started, you know, you got to get the basics down. You got to make sure you're squatting in depth. Um, of course, there's, if you've been deadlifting a long time, you're lifting really heavy, there's going to be some flexion in the back, but you have to know how to put your back in extension because if you don't know how to put your back in extension, then you can't fight it when it wants to round. And while we say, you know, a little bit of flexion is okay, it's okay, okay, as long as you are fighting, actively fighting it from leaving. Because if you don't know how to fight that by bracing the abs and doing the Valsalva maneuver, maneuver, then you just look like Calhoun taking a dump. <laughs> and that's not the position we want you in. And we don't want a ton of movement throughout the rep. So you have to know a little bit how to maintain that stuff. My background's a little when I'm dead. Everyone does. Yeah. I mean, you deadlift 455. Yeah. And you weigh not 200, not 200. No. Yeah. 182. Yeah. So is that's more, public. that's more than two X. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's like 2.35. There's homeschool mass. 455 divided by 182, 2.5, uh, 2.5, two and a half. I was off. Yeah. Two yeah. And a half. So two and a half times so body weight. That's going to happen. Yeah. That's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. now, now you're not like this either though. No, no, You no, just no, have no. a little bit as you break the ground and that's okay. Mm hmm. And like the upper back as you break the ground, little upper back, little lower back. Mm -hmm. And what I would say to people, if you've been training and you've paid attention and you've learned how to set your back and you're getting stronger, the, the problem I see with people that's actually gotten strong is they worry way too much mm -hmm. about the most minute form details. Did my knee slide at the bottom? Yeah. <laughs> you were squatting 480 for a triple. They, they, they slid a little bit. Yeah. Oh, is that bad? No, you've yeah. gotten to the point where you can squat 40. I mean, is it ideal? No, but don't, don't overthink these small form things that in the grand scheme of things yeah. don't really matter. That's like, uh, I was talking to somebody about this today. You've seen the, uh, the iconic video of Ronnie Coleman squatting 800, I think for two or three yeah. reps, it was like two weeks before his bodybuilding show, like something nuts. And, uh, to be fair, Everyone in the comments, they were technically right. They they all roast Ronnie Coleman, the goat, for not squatting to depth. He was a little high on his sure. on his squats. He's doing high bar, just ripping out eight hundred for three. And I, my only thought when I saw that was like, dude, it's eight hundred pounds. Well, that's a whole nother thing, right? It's yeah. like when people want to rip on someone for deadlifting sumo deadlifting eight hundred or high bar squatting <laughs> yeah. something like. Hey, the guy's moving 800. I can't move 800 pounds anywhere. No. Right. But I'm even talking before that. I'm right, talking about right, like right. these people that their deadlifts at 335. Yeah. And they're watching these videos and they're like, oh, I see some roundation in my back. Yeah, dude. Add five pounds. <laughs> like nothing hurts. You're feeling fine. Yeah. Don't overthink the form. But yeah, both, both cases are true. Yeah. But, and I'm talking just that I'm the people's lifter. I'm here for right. you. Like, listen, Learn how to do the lifts, but then don't overthink the lifts. Now, like, that's a little different. I think that maybe the caveat is that, I mean, you were just saying that, okay, for example, my fiance should probably back down a little bit to learn the form correctly. Yeah. I think maybe it's, maybe what you're saying is you have to take the time to learn it right. But once you've learned it Execute. correctly and your execution ends up of being a little off down yeah. the road. Down the road. Yeah. Then I mean, what I would, different. what I would say in the light of your fiance is, there was no hip drive. Mm -hmm. And that's like a basic tenet. If you're right. going to low bar squat, you have to learn how to hip drive. Like right. that's a must. And so if a guy knows hip drive and mm -hmm. he's getting his hips involved in the lift, but in the bottom, his knees are a little squirmy. Uh, I don't care. Yeah. Now, if he's missing squats, cause he's going down and trying to lift his chest out of the bottom. Yeah. Take some weight off and learn how to do this correctly. Oh yeah. And if the answer is not always take weight off And this, the answer is if you're doing a lift, and you're getting coached to 
improve your mechanics. And the thing holding you back from improving your mechanics is you're scared of dying. (laughs) Then you have to lower the weight a little bit so that you can no longer be scared of dying Mm -hmm. and improve your mechanics. And then once you get that movement pattern down, load the bargain. There you go. There it is. All right, should we let these guys in? Let's do it. All right, episode 015 of the... Okay. 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 Podcast powered by the Shrank Co. Nailed it. I'm kind of your host, kind of not really. There's kind of a bunch of hosts here, but PJ (laughs) is PJ, which stands for producer Jordy. He's here with me in Greenville, as we said in the preamble. Uh, Trey Gottlich. A&M grad. We can't say that enough. God mm. bless the Aggies. Um, Gamecocks and Aggies just split a series in baseball. But uh, wow. yeah, Trey Gallich are coming from us out of te- Texas today. So we want to hear all about that eclipse. And Mr. Jeff Biggie. Bouget. B-U-E-G-E. Uh, Somehow. So, yeah, Bouget. But Biggie, like Smalls, uh, coming in from, can we call it the Greater Salt Lake City area? The saltiness of lakes. Yeah. That great yeah. Salt Lake. It's Salt Lake. It's Salt Lake City. Yeah. Okay. I mean, are, is your address Salt Lake City? Mm-hmm. Band oh. of Horses. Oh, yeah. So, wow. The Great Salt Lake, huh? Great Salt Lake. Like, I thought it was like Sandy or something. Oh, no. No, I am. Yeah. Oh, I'm in there like swimwear. In there like <laughs> swimwear. Ooh, look uh, at that hat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that thing. Oh, that, that hat. That thing saved my life. Oh, I think he meant your hat. Sorry. No, I think you meant that hat. I think I meant that hat, Grant. Yeah, yeah, a, a, he's a, he's a true I mean, Texan. In, no, in South Carolina, we just call that a hat. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> excuse you. <laughs> Raised in South Carolina. Mm. Um, but yeah, so episode 015, we got a guest coming on. Uh, oh, great. Jeff, we all know Jeff, who it is. Jeff and I will give him a good introduction. Jeff knows who yeah. it is. It's his idea. Yeah. Uh, he should be on about oh, okay. 10 minutes or so, although Zoom does seem to be a state-of-the-art technology for him, so we'll see if he's able to get on. Um, I like those people, though. Yeah, those people are the yeah. best. Yeah, like, what is this? Yeah, Video? But, but something? We, we should save that for when he gets on here. So, in, in short, we got about 10 minutes, Jeff. Mm. What do we want to cover before he comes on? Uh, I really want to just dive into the eclipse. Ugh. Okay. Mm, total eclipse of the dude heart. like Ooh. reference number one for grant Ding. yeah so oh wait 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 wait! i was wait. in the gym today bench pressing laying down as, as, you the the do. as, <laughs> yeah. as, this as one does yeah <laughs> <laughs> unracked the i unracked the bench and i heard black morning sun won't you come who sings that Black morning sun, won't you come? Wash away the pain. I was like, oh, the eclipse, the black morning sun's the moon. It's going to pass the sun. Homeschool. uh, It was on Guitar Hero. Soundgarden? Soundgarden, yeah. Is it Soundgarden? Black Hole hole Sun. Black Hole Sun. Black Black Hole Sun. sun. What was I called? Black Morning Sun? Yeah, anyway. They're close enough. I knew knew what you meant. We knew what you meant. Yeah, I was like, this is an eclipse song. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the sun went black today. Am I wrong? Yeah, kinda, yeah, yeah. So, it is sun guard. Okay, Trey. I feel like you had the best eclipse. Yeah, experience. did I have? Did I have the best seat in the house? Were you in the I mean, total exclusion zone or oh, whatever? Total, total eclipse. Were you? So were I would you technically. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, it was yeah. right over my house. Wait, not 100. percent I'm right. Like literally 100 percent eclipse. Both, both. 100 uh, percent and 100 percent. Yeah. Black Damn, hole nice. sun. Won't, you, won't come? you come? So I thought it was gonna be, I don't know. I was like, I'm like, uh, why is everybody like getting all hyped for this? Dude, and then like, so hyped, dude. They were going nuts. Like the nuts. city of Dallas tripled, like in size. Wow. <laughs> like people flying in from like out of the country to like see yeah. it. I'm like, like what's the big deal? And then like it happened, then- and I was like. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. Yeah. I was like, but that's really cool. I thought the rapture was going to happen. Like as the, you know, as it crossed over, like God's saints were going to go into heaven, but it didn't. Mm. No, it movie, did. Like, oh, yeah. really did. I'd be very uh, disappointed still, if it did. We're still <laughs> here. We're still <laughs> here. Uh, yeah, I feel, like, I feel like I saw a couple of those videos. Okay. But no, like it started like at, 
like it you it slowly started like creeping in like at 12 30 12 20 12 30 so and then wait america time we're 70 percent of the population lives. yeah i'm sorry one one 20 year time yeah okay interesting so for me it started at at 3 p.m which I think is the difference between we were experiencing an 80% and you were experiencing an 80, mm-hmm. 100%. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. But so about around one o'clock my time, you started seeing the effects. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And then it's it was going. And then I think I want to say it was like at two, maybe at like 230 or 240. It was like 100%. 340 my time. That makes sense. That checks out. And then and then like it was a hundred percent at like two forty something and it lasted for like three minutes and forty two seconds, something like that. Okay. And it was just like I guess slowly started. It's like someone was like dimming down the lights and then out of nowhere it was just like it looked like it does right now outside. Kind of like so do you, wow. so do you like put the timer on your watch and then like use the eclipse to Did you time, get it? To, to time your sets between squats? No, oh, well, it's hard back. against. That's not for us. <laughs> Apparently, you're supposed to have like some sort of special glasses, and I was just mm. like, <laughs> "Hey Trey, how many <laughs> fingers am I holding up, Trey? <laughs> hey, Who's Trey. that? <laughs> hey, Trey! <laughs> oh no! Uh-oh. So, uh oh! So burn my retinas out. I thought Worth the little, I thought the little time lapse that you um, showed. Not me. Cool. Uh, yeah, we had some friends down the street. Uh, oh. That we go to church with, and she sent that over to the group. And I'm like, man, that's what I thought of that. Need a church, yeah, that yeah, cool. yeah. She Chelsea did a good job. So, all right, big shout, shout out Chelsea. Chelsea. Shout out Chelsea, potential sponsor, potential make sponsor sure, Chelsea. Make, make sure Thank you send you her this. Make sure you send her this uh, episode. Okay. Um. So my experience was kind of equally not as cool. Um. I I actually went for a yog. Marine Corps, mm. December five, trying to get my three yeah. mile time down. Uh, and I stopped get your threes in, back. I stopped at an area where they have like a coffee shop, a couple of restaurants, like off a trail, and everyone was outside. And it was like two forty, and three oh six p.m. was like when we were supposed to have like peak in Greenville. Yeah, and so I went and got my laptop, opened it up, was doing some work, and then people started getting really excited. And it definitely got a little darker, but nothing like like. You could have told me it was just black clouds. It looked yeah. overcast. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't yeah. really a black hole sun. And then they, they're they like, everyone has the glass on. I'm like, hey, can I see those? So some guy hands me his glasses. I put them on, I look up. And now all of a sudden it's completely black and it's like this little sliver of moon. But then I took the glasses off and I was like, well, that's like when you look up at the stars and everyone's like, there's Orion's belt. And you're like, I don't see it. And they hand you an iPhone on the space app. And then you look and you're like, oh, there's Orion's belt. (laughs) And I was like, this is not that cool. Uh, But we had a little discussion on our Slack group on the Strength Co. Slack. You can join for 29 bucks a month. Come in. Over Hmm. 200 lifters. All members of the OK Podcast are there. But uh, Jeff, shout out Jeff Graham. What's the name of his podcast? The Yeoman. The Yeoman Podcast. The Yeoman Podcast. Listen to the Yeoman Podcast. He interviews people, very successful people in business, doing a bunch of things. Cool podcast. In any event, his house in North Carolina in 2017 was 100% like yours, Trey. And Mm. this year it was 80%. And he was talking about how 100% versus 80%, the coolness factor uh, oh, difference is way greater than 20%. Like yeah. Way better at a hundred percent, like exponentially times star Wars three. No, oh, hundred percent. That was like top, they made. easily probably yeah. top like five coolest things I've ever seen. Yeah. As far wow. As yeah. Whoa. And like, I've yeah. seen Jeff, I've seen Jeff like in person and like, yeah, I mean, I was up there. I don't know. Five. <laughs> no, Jeff's like, Jeff's yeah. up there. You've seen a, you've seen a midnight <laughs> yell. I've seen a midnight yell. Yeah. Wow. Man, that didn't make, that didn't make quick. it. <laughs> You've been to the Arnold? You've been to the yeah. Arnold? Yeah. Wow. Top five. It was It was That's, actually, it lived up to the hype. I'll put it that way. Nice. So. Yeah, I'll take That's that. Good. There was That's an earthquake good. too this week. True. Everybody was freaking out about it, you know? Where at? The rapture. Uh, it was up around uh, New Jersey, New York yeah. area. And everybody was like, did you feel that earthquake? Did you feel that earthquake? Did something just happen? I, and, I saw uh, someone post a video of like, De- damage from New York earthquake and it was like a chair fell over and yeah, then like it. <laughs> a picture was like tilted <laughs> well our guest is here should I let him in oh amazing uh, let him in. in let him in all right 
Here we are, episode 015 of the OK Podcast, and we have coming from, I assume, sunny Florida. I don't think the eclipse effect had much on him. Big Jim Denofa. And uh, mm. it, did I say your last name right? Yeah, man. Yeah. I've, yeah had you, I've had you saved in my phone since 2012 as Denorfa. And, yeah. and I'm yeah, like, I'm it's... not, you can't change it at this point. No, yeah. I mean, the the standard is to say it wrong in some capacity. I yeah. It's but, to to me. I've had my that name my whole life. It seems really simple, but I uh, yeah. I don't know. It's it's pretty difficult, apparently. Denofa. Yeah. No, uh, that's pretty good. Do I sound pretty, right on this? Oh, you yeah, you sound, sound good. good. Right? Yeah, you sound yeah. good. Sounds really? good. T-shirt. Sing us a tune. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. This so is my get- first time on Zoom. Oh, well, welcome. Welcome to Zoom. Wow. Well, wow. Welcome to, well, welcome you made to March Google of Hangout 2020. Guy. Big <laughs> yeah. Google Hangout guy. Made uh, it through COVID. Wow. Let me, before well, we I t- live in Florida, so, you know, so, we didn't really uh, it we happened didn't there. participate. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> we <laughs> never we did participate. <laughs> oh, that's good. So we got a lot we want to talk about to Jim for, but so Jim, you're like, I don't know, maybe the eighth guest we've had. And uh, we missed this important thing of introducing our guest because we okay. think because we know who you are, that yeah, everyone yeah. knows who you are. And don't get me wrong. There's only maybe like 500 people that listen to this, but there's probably 496 people that have no idea who you are. Mm, so yeah. for a little context, <laughs> Jim was Jeff and I's CrossFit coach in Fort Sill, Oklahoma, while we were going through artillery school and uh, he ran CrossFit Havoc. It was a couple miles outside of base and mm-hmm. uh, he was awesome and very instrumental uh, for our time there. We loved finishing class and doing nerdy artillery stuff and coming and slinging weights and moving weights. And we, I, I have some coaching cues that I use to this day that I learned from him and Jeff mm-hmm. does too. And he came to our graduation and I've always, we've always kept up with this guy, got to see him at the Arnold a few years ago, yeah. uh, Jim who owns the gym but and he goes even back further than that. If you if you want to go super OG, like what what year did you do the video with Ripito? It was like two thousand eight oh, nine. The uh, DVD, yeah. I mean, it was well, a DVD. Yeah, I think it was two thousand eight, maybe. I think it was yeah. two thousand eight. Yeah. yeah, that's when so, people used to watch DVDs, so yeah. it was relevant. Some yeah. some sometime around then, but Jim is. Uh, Calls himself uh, a ge- geezer kind of, lifter, what still kind of big video? into CrossFit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, wow. Well. We're going to go tasteful. Very we're just tasteful. Gonna, <laughs> we're going to just go over we're, that. We were going to gloss over that, Trey. <laughs> you can buy it on the side of the interstate in Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. still for sale somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, Jim, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm really excited. I, uh, I, I listen to podcasts, but I, I don't really uh, do them. I think this is my... my second. Oh, good. I did. Oh, I did wow. one before and then I was really excited about it. And then it ended up, uh, the guy didn't record it. So uh, <laughs> I, th- I thought I did a good job. So it was just I was pretty con- excited. So this <laughs> is a kind of conversation FaceTime. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I have a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I'll de- you'll <laughs> yeah. definitely be on the podcast. Wait, real quick. Let me put you on a quick pause. Jordy, we are recording, right? Uh, yeah, we yeah, are recording. We're recording. Okay. Yeah, you're, okay, you're good. Jim. You're good. Verified. <laughs> Verified. So Jim, doesn't lie. why don't we'll kind of do some round robin, a lot of questions, but tell us now, you know, we knew you CrossFit gym. I don't know, maybe a hundred members, a lot of military mm-hmm. folk. Yeah. Um, like w- w- what are you doing now? Same thing. Like any, I mean, I know you're obviously in Florida now. Yeah. CrossFit's had it's like roller coaster ride for like, sure. Tell us a little bit about like your spot and what you're doing these days. Yeah. So, I mean, we opened the gym in 09. Um, so we just hit 15 years in February, February 1st was our 15 year anniversary. So pretty cool. Um, I don't, I don't know. I'm not a real big anniversary guy, I guess. I don't, I didn't really, uh, most people didn't even know that, that we'd been open that long. Like, it's just not, I don't know. I, I kind of just let it, let it happen. Um, but as far as the gym goes, like, I, I have a lot of diversity in our gym for, for being a CrossFit gym. So our, our gym's kind of always been a little bit different um, when it comes to, you know, the CrossFit model. I have 
a specific section of the gym that is like we have a mono lift. We have um, a leg press, a leg extension, hack squat, uh, cable crossover. So like a little mini like globo gym, if you will, in there. And then the rest of it is like a, you know, a normal CrossFit gym. So we have a lot of people that are just in the gym training, doing strongman, bodybuilding, powerlifting, mm. weightlifting, whatever, whatever they want to do. And then simultaneously we'll have class. So it can, it's kind of cool because you uh, like allowing those communities to interact. And then there's like a, there's a, a bit of like reciprocity with uh, like people respect each other when they see how hard they work. So like a normal interaction between someone who, you know, trained at a bodybuilding gym that they meet a CrossFit are like, Oh yeah, I'm not into that CrossFit stuff. Like, yeah, well it's, it's weird. So, but if you go to a CrossFit gym and you watch how hard people are working, like it's, it's difficult to not have a level of respect for what, whatever, whatever it is they're doing. I mean, whether you agree with the methodology or not, um, people are putting out and they're, and they're doing their best. It's, it's difficult to put down effort, whether you like what's happening via the effort or not. Like if you see somebody putting out, I mean, if I see somebody, you know, running a marathon, I, I can't put that down. I have no interest in doing that, but <laughs> you can't, you can't put that down. I mean, I just, sure. I, yeah. You know what I mean? So I really, I really uh, like that. I, I, I like having the communities kind of mesh and um, having people interact in a way that's generally pretty damn healthy. So mm. I don't know. I, I don't know if that's what you're looking for from me. Was no, that, that's, was that that's a, good. That's no, that's great. And like, okay. as, as a, as a fellow gym owner, when she didn't warn me enough not to open a gym, uh, now, <laughs> yeah. now, 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 now I'm stuck. I'm curious. Yeah. So, you know, when I opened mine, it was like strictly the starting strength method mm -hmm. and, and that worked. But what I learned was, Hey, you coach people how to do this method. And it's actually not that complex. It's like, Hey, right. learn how to squat, press, bench, deadlift. Now you know how to do that. Add some weight. Okay. Now you're no longer a novice. Follow any of these 1000 programs and you will mm -hmm. have success if you show up. And so now the right. model is like, Hey, come in, learn how to lift. And then there's a bunch of open gym days. I'm curious yeah. for you doing CrossFit which is kind of a different mindset because you're coming in for that workout, for that workout leader, you know, for yeah. to, to compete against yourself. It doesn't really matter how strong you are. Of course it does in terms of the load you put on the bar, but it just all comes down to like work capacity. So you have that side, then you have like, you call it a globo gym, but if you got a monolift and hack squats, I would say like you almost have a power lifting section over there. Sure. What, sure. Per what percentage is it 50, 50? Is it like, Hey, I'm a 70%. Not that it matters. I'm just curious in terms of, as you talk about that, you know, yeah, so, integration. Yeah. Well, um, so a lot of CrossFitters now, um, I, okay. So here's the thing. I, I like CrossFit, but ah, people can we're about really to get deep on gym right here. I love <laughs> yeah. this. People can be total geeks about it. Like, yeah. The the bet the best Crossfitters, uh, you know, you guys have heard of Rich Froning. You've heard of that yeah. guy. Yeah, right. That okay, guy. cool. Yep. Yeah. So uh I've never trained with Rich Froning, but I've watched a lot of his stuff. And from what I've gathered, he's like, yo, let's work out. Let's just do some hard shit. Like, uh, let's, you know, check the boxes of of um hitting the big lifts and maintaining um the you know, the things that are important, I mean, you, you, obviously you guys are, are very protocol based when it comes to barbell training, you know, and there's like very basic linear progressions that, that you can adhere to. But in, in the, if you're going to compete in CrossFit, it's like, you don't know what you're going to do. So just sure. do a whole bunch of random shit. Right. And, and be ready can I say shit on this podcast? Yeah, yeah, you're okay. I already yeah, said yeah, yeah. it. You're good. I already you're did good. it. Okay. Yeah, three, three times, but we'll just count. And as okay. long as you stay under 45, you're good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, they, they make things a, like way more complicated than it needs to be. Um, you need to check the boxes of, hey, I can, I can do these skills and I can do these skills when I'm tired. I can do a heavy snatch when I feel really yucky. I can 
climb a rope when I'm out of breath. I can do all these things. And I've, I've, the reason I, I brought that up is because I have a population of people that pay for like extra CrossFit programming. Like they have a, a CrossFit coach, uh, like an online coach. And they're doing these like arbitrary workouts and they're like, you know, putting it in their journal and they're, and they're, and, and they're very meticulous about what they're doing. And she's like, you're doing random things. Like you're not doing a well thought out program. You're, you're doing just, you know, what, what people would imagine a CrossFit uh, protocol would be like, yeah, do this weird stuff and then do this weird stuff and put it all together and then try to lift weights when you feel really bad. Um, and they'll pay, you know, two, $300 a month for a coach to have them perform these, these workouts. And to me, it's a total waste. Uh, it's a total waste. Not because I think, Hey, my gym's programming is better than theirs, but the, the thing that you're going to get out of training at a CrossFit gym that you, that's a little different from what you would normally get at a, at a normal gym is, Hey, we're all going to do this hard workout and we're going to do it together. And I'm going to try to beat you at this workout. And you're going to try to beat me at this workout. Right. And when you have people that are doing programming outside of that, they're just doing random workouts and they're doing them by themselves. And you kind of miss the, the essence of training at a CrossFit gym. Like you, you might as well just go to crunch and use their bumper plates and swing around on their pull-up bars. And, and, you know, I don't know. It, it's, I, I don't know if that's what you asked me, but I, I guess I just kind of went off on it because it's a, oh, it's a, yeah. it's a little frustrating because like, listen, man, I, I've been doing CrossFit since 2006. Right. And it's fun, but I really don't take it that serious. Like I, pretended to take it serious. At one point, I tried to pretend like I was going to be one of those guys that goes to California. And I, I, it's not me. Like I'm a, I'm a ham and egg or I'm a mediocre athlete that I like working out. And that's what most people are. And it's difficult to, it's difficult to tell people like, yo, you're regular. Sorry. Yeah. You're, you're just like me. You're yeah. in fact, you're not even as good as me <laughs> yeah. yet. And I'm not good. Like, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. You've been doing this for, so just when people um, take themselves too serious with training and like, um, just pretend that they're like, their goals are, are these, uh, you know, these grand goals that like, Oh, I'm good. Someday I'm going to do this. And so like, yeah, probably. But are, do you like it? Do you, do you like lifting weights? Do you like doing muscle ups and walking on your hands? Do you, do you like that stuff? Because if you like it, then you'll keep doing it. But if you're doing this, this CrossFit programming or, or whatever programming you're doing because you think you're going to go to the CrossFit games, odds are you're spinning your wheels. I mean, it's going to be 40 people out of every person on the planet. And odds yeah. are it's not you. Yeah. Odds, odds are it's are, somebody else. <laughs> odds are it's some division one college athlete that didn't make the pros. And he says, Oh, yeah, right. You need me to just do this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I could just pick your brain for hours, but I think it's more interesting if we kick it around. Jeff, yeah. you know, Jim, well, uh, I, yeah, yeah. Hit it. Well, I was just going to tack on to that. Yeah. It's like people, they want the complexity right away. Like you probably even seen this with like, barbell lifters that come in and they immediately are like, well, I'm a, I'm an intermediate. I've been lifting for three weeks and they want like the really complex, like all the funky, like programming and weird intervals for like CrossFit. And it's like, no, well, you've been doing this for six months. Like let's, let's, let's stick to the basics and like mm -hmm. build you up a little bit. Um, yeah. People just want that complexity right away. But I was going to ask Jim, uh, so yeah, you qualify or you classify yourself as like the geezer lifter, right? You've you've done all <laughs> yeah. all, all kinds of lifting. Um yeah. you know, Johnson Strongman, you've done some Olympic lifting, some powerlifting, and then yeah. kind of all that came to a head with CrossFit. Mm -hmm. And so like what are what are kind of your current goals now? Like what's like the the lifts like you're chasing? Are there numbers that you're still like going after, still trying to hit PRs? For sure. Yeah. Um and I guess I guess that's there's like a, a concept that I um, 
kind of came to the realization about maybe, yeah, maybe five, six years ago at this point, um, my mediocrity in, in what I, it's like in what I do is the reason that I'm still doing it. Um, the guys that get to the top, top of the mountain, you know, and they go and they win world strongest man, or they win, you know, um, worlds in powerlifting, or they win, you know, the Olympic games and like, or they win the CrossFit games, they eventually retire. And, and like, that's because they, they did it. Like, like they, they did the thing. Um, I've been training since I was 13. Um, I'll be 44 in a couple of weeks. So, I, and I still have a lot of things that I haven't done yet. So it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a great thing for me to um, still not have been able to check all those boxes because I'm still hungry after three decades of, of doing this stuff. I still want to keep training because I have goals that are, are just still ahead of me. So what, what are those goals to be, to um, be specific? Cause I know, like, I know, I, I, I don't know you super well, but I know you well mm -hmm. enough that you know exactly. Like I watched you put your body weight in the bar. Oh and yeah, fight a marine I still remember captain that. And say, yeah. <laughs> hey, who can squat your body weight more? And I think he did 110, yeah. and you did it what 140 something times. Ugh. Well, I, we could go with one. It was 120, but 140 oh, sounds 120. way. Cool. Yeah, 140 yeah. sounds well, and, and <laughs> yeah. it's like how close were you to the eclipse? Like those 20 <laughs> yeah. reps between 120 and 140 <laughs> would, would count a lot more than between 20 yeah. and oh my 40. Gosh. But yeah, I've sure. seen you do some crazy stuff, but I mean, like, um, I don't know, well, like, like what so is I, like, your main lifting goals? So I, um, I, I recently hit a PR on my back squat, um, like literally I two weeks that. ago. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And that was a, that was actually a really emotional moment for me because you know i squatted 400 pounds when i was 15 right um and there's kind of this um i i've been talking a lot about this stuff lately with, with people so it's um i guess i'm just gonna kind of keep Let going with out. you guys with Let it, it out, like, brother yeah but like so i i kind of peaked early like i i weighed, I, I weighed 165 pounds i was 15 i squatted 400 pounds so that's pretty good for a you know yeah. 15 year old kid. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Verified. But, right. But so fast forward 28 years, like 28 straight years, no breaks in training, no, uh, I mean, different goals along the way, but I never stopped training ever. Like I could count on one hand, the amount of one week breaks that I've taken from training in, you know, the entire time that I've, I started. Um, I just have always done it. I've never not done it. But I, I, I hit a 500 pound back squat. So it took me 28 years to put 100 pounds on my back squat. So uh, you know, like it, it really, it really got to a point um, about a year ago. I was like, well, that's it. 485 is my PR, and that's just what I'm gonna. I'm gonna die with a 485 back squat. And it was. It really stung a lot. Like I was like, God, how the hell can I? do all of this stuff for this long and I still can't hit this freaking number. It was really frustrating. Um, and then I, I did it. I, I had a run where like I was, I made up a little, it's a four week cycle. I was squatting three days a week and the, the sets were very simple. It was just two work sets per day, three days a week. And I didn't get hurt. I was like, Oh my God, I didn't get hurt. I, I like, I was so excited to, I, I just, I always, something always happens. I'm like Mr. Glass, but I, uh, that's nothing word, happened. That's where the word geezer comes from. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So everything lined up. It was, you know, a Friday afternoon and I was getting ready to, to do this 500 pound back squat. And as I was getting ready, all of my buds were walking into the gym. Like there was like nine guys in there that I care about and that cared about me. And they were all there. I was like, oh gosh, this is, <laughs> there was so much pressure to do it. And, and I did it. And like, I legitimately, I, I did it. And then I walked outside and I cried like straight up. I, it, it was just, it was a, I mean, you know, it's like kind of an arbitrary thing. Like, wow, you did a 500 pound back squat. Like, have you ever heard of, I don't know, 
20,000 other people that, that can do that, <laughs> you, you, you know, but it meant a lot to me. And, and I know how much I went through to get there. So it was, mm -hmm. it was a big deal. Um, yeah. so, so yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure Grant, you have a couple runs at it at meets and stuff, right? Isn't that? Yeah. Yeah. I've had a couple of runs I mean, my best Scott's 515. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought I'd never hit 500. I, fa I think I failed 500 six times before I finally hit it. And yeah. I kind of tell a similar story that's not as great as yours, but I always say in, you know, um, uh, in 2014, I squatted 485 and I didn't mm -hmm. squat 500 until 2019. And I always tell yeah. people that story because they come into the gym, they're working hard, they're adding weight to the bar and things plateau. And I'm like, yeah this is where you just have to be consistent and keep coming. And they're like, yeah, right. but I want to make progress. I'm like, well, you don't know where the progress <laughs> is going to come from. It comes from yeah. within the consistency and you have to keep going. And I always say like, it took me five years to add 15 pounds to my squat. In your mm -hmm. case, 28 years to add, you know, hundred pounds to your squat. Yeah. And I always tell them the stronger you are, the harder it is to get stronger, which almost exactly. comes to, to make it even worse because, yeah. you know, you'll go into a training cycle and you're like, I know what I was doing to squat 500 pounds. <laughs> like yeah. I was blacking out my room. I was going to bed at nine. Like I, my diet was perfect. My training sessions were two and a half. Like at like, I didn't do anything. P do you want to come over and eat pizza and watch a movie? No, I'm going to bed. It's like now mm -hmm. people are like, do you still want to hit a PR? I'm like, well, of course. But also it's like, you know, it like what it takes, but I'm yeah. kind of like you, like I always tell people I haven't missed a workout in over 10 years. I mean, mm -hmm. because it's like, I know it's the process that, that keeps it going. I also, you kind of broke me though, because when I was in your gym, which I guess is now 12 years ago, you <laughs> yeah. told me that men's strength peaks at age 33. <laughs> How dare you? Did, just, did I just say that? But just you missed said, it. You said, <laughs> assuming they've been training from a younger age, but you were like, 33 is the number where like men peak. And that's I'm like, well, just, that's bullshit. I, just, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> okay, thanks. That wasn't real. <laughs> I'm going to start changing his stance I'm gonna, on that. I'm going to start it's 32 training again now. Because <laughs> I'm, 30, I'm 35 now, and I was like, eh, I yeah. can kind of stop. My peak, my prime's over. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess why I even try? Go. Yeah, I mean, right. What's your it? point? That's like when people, you know, like, you know, 88% of statistics are, are made up. It's just, yeah. it's the same kind of nonsense. Like, I, Heck, Bobby, I, I was I drunk when I said that. <laughs> first, yeah, exactly. said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you give me four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's kick it over to Trey. Trey, what do you got for, for Jim? Man, y'all have covered a lot of topics. I don't see you stole a lot of my questions, but it's not a big deal. Man, so... At, at your gym, is it predominantly like whenever you're doing the coaching, is it predominantly CrossFit or is it kind of a healthy mix of whatever? Kind of uh, so, it sounds like yeah. So, I mean, like the way that the gym runs, I have. Uh, this will lead to another question, by the way. So, okay, that's fine. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Follow up question. Yeah. Follow up I, question. <laughs> so, I, I'll have my class of, you know, whatever, 15 people, whatever. Um, and they're, we're, they're doing the workout of the day and we're, you know, getting into it. And there'll be people just kind of around the gym, um, on the outskirts that are doing whatever they're going to be doing. So I have okay. got guys doing, you know, powerlifting training or weightlifting training or whatever, but just kind of on the outskirts. Um, and it's, um, it works well, normally, um, there's, there's always going to be somebody who doesn't really understand the etiquette of, because the etiquette at our gym is a little different than a normal gym. Like, yo, I know you're using that rower, but I have 15 people in this class and I have 10 rowers. So you, give me that. Yeah. Like, you're not using it. It's the benefit um, of owning it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, it's, but normally it, it works pretty well because people kind of will normally be, gotcha. They'll, they'll be fine. They'll, they'll, I gotcha. Just, you know, cooperate. So, so I guess my follow-up to the question is that is, so I've never really, I've done like a CrossFit class, like occasionally every now and then tag along with a buddy yeah. or something like that. And then would you say, this is me just being ignorant, just in general on the sport. Would you say like, since its inception, which was, I feel like early two thousands is when I remember it yeah. popping up. Right. Mm -hmm. Since its inception, like has CrossFit changed as a whole, as far as like what the, I don't know if the goal is the right word or just kind of like 
daily exercises for the average Joe or has your view of CrossFit changed since its inception or? Sure. I mean, I've definitely and, gone through a, a journey with, I mean, I've been doing CrossFit for uh, 18 years now. Um, yeah. So it's, it's a while, you know, to, to be doing the, the same thing. And I have, I've had like um, definite waves of, of my feelings about, CrossFit, the, the methodology, of course, this, this is one of the issues with CrossFit, right? This is why people don't like it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, this is it, right? CrossFit's three things. It's a brand, it's a methodology, and it's a sport, right? And the issue is that people will confuse the brand, the methodology, and the sport. Like, okay. hey, I, like, hey, I do CrossFit. Oh, you compete in CrossFit. Like, no, I just, I go to a gym and I do burpees and back squats because some guy tells me to, and then I want to have abs. I don't care about, <laughs> I don't care about going to the, I'm not going to go to the CrossFit. I don't care about it. Right. Yeah. And yeah. then there's, then there's the brand CrossFit and you know, it's um, the guy that, that invented it, Greg Glassman, he's kind of out of the picture now, but um, there's, there's the brand and, and then there's like the affiliates under the brand and then there's how they represent the brand. And some people are, disappointed with that. Mm -hmm. And, and rightfully so. I mean, there's like, I don't know, 15,000 gyms. So there's going to be things that turn people off about, about the brand. And, um, my job is to make sure that my community, my little gym is, is healthy and people like what they're doing. Um, so yeah. I, I'm not a, uh, Grant could probably tell you, but like I eat the food that I like to eat. I don't, mm. I'm not a paleo he's, guy. I'm not. He's been out working mm. his diet since 2000. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's he's exactly right. I've never, the only diet I've ever been on in my whole life, I've been on McDonald's one diet. diet. McDonald's you got diet. It. I've been, I. <laughs> tell I us ate, about it. Tell us about it. Yeah. So I was at, I was at breakfast with, uh, with my buddy and, um, we were talking about super size me and I was like, yeah, that guy's a freaking puss. Like he really wimped out on that, <laughs> in that movie. And, and he's like, what are you talking about? I was like, he freaking wimped out. He just like, he just let himself get fat for the movie. Like it was bullshit. He, it wasn't, it wasn't real. It wasn't like a genuine thing. He just like wanted to play it up. So I bet him, I was like, I can eat McDonald's every day and, and I'll be fine. Like I'll, I'll weigh the same. And so what I got out of it is he paid for my meals for a week. It was, only, it was only a week. It was only that's a week. Still, that's still impressive. Yeah. But so I ate McDonald's three times a day and I had to, it had to be a large meal every time. Um, and then I had to get at least one McFlurry per day. Um, oh, and so no. I, um, <laughs> I, yeah, so I weighed 203 pounds at the beginning of the week and then 203 pounds at the end of the week. So <laughs> wow, it was, yeah. So honestly, I, I think I was kind of in a, in a deficit because like I, I usually eat more, <laughs> I usually eat more food than what that diet entailed. So, I mean, I would I get, get double. Could you tell a difference though, like in your energy level, like when you're working oh, I, out? I, dude, I freaking stunk. <laughs> I, that was the worst part was I, like, I like was like, gas? yeah, I was, I, I'm not a, like, luckily, I, I, I got, I got pretty lucky in life. I'm not like a stinky guy. Like, I'm not like a, like I sweat, but I don't really stink that bad. I don't know how that happened, but uh -huh. I just, I'm kind of lucky and must be nice. By, yeah. By the end of the week, I just, I was just leaking these <laughs> like fumes almost out of my skin. and. That was definitely, that was the worst part. And then the second worst part was having to drive to McDonald's every time I wanted to eat because you can't eat cold French fries. So you can't like buy, you can't buy two meals at once and then save it for later. Like no. I, I wasn't going to do it. I'm not going to eat cold fries. And, and then you can't even, how do you reheat up McDonald's French fries? You guys don't eat McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Nah. Do you guys eat? No, I knew it. Well, oh, I'll, I'll, eat, I'll eat McDonald's. No, I'll, eat McDonald's. I'll eat anything. Yeah, dude, what are you oh, talking sorry, about? Speak for yourself. Okay. Journey's over I just haven't had McDonald's 20s. in a while. <laughs> yeah. <but. laughs>
No, so that, 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 who's yeah. that potential sponsor? Ever been hey. yeah. Potential sponsor. <laughs> potential sponsor McDonald's. Oh, that'd, be great. Yeah. that'd be a good sponsor. <laughs> uh, let's kick it over to Jordy. What do you got for Big Jim? Okay. Uh, I have a question, more of a, a maybe a technical CrossFit question. So I'm mm-hmm. unfamiliar. I've never done CrossFit, but I've uh-huh. maybe been CrossFit curious in the past. Mm. And so <laughs> there are uh like with every training modality, I don't know if a better word, that's a big word, yeah, but with every training modality, they understand that in Florida. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> hey, I work. lived in Florida for a while. It's okay. Um, there's pros and cons, like there's trade-offs to every kind of style you're going to do. And so yeah. I was wondering for me, not knowing much about it, what do you think CrossFit specifically is best at? And what is it worst at? Like I imagine a powerlifting program is going to be best at, you know, getting your squat bench and deadlift higher, mm-hmm. but it's not going to be the best at maybe, I don't know, cardiovascular fitness. Like what yeah. are the trade-offs and what is the best and worst at when it comes to CrossFit? Sure. I mean, well, CrossFit by nature is a GPP program, right? So like it's, Explain. You're just, I've already ex- lost. Explain what's, what that means. GPP? Oh. So a uh, general you know physical me. preparedness. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like a police call for the general people. You yeah. down with GPP? Yeah. You yeah, know you know me. Yeah. me. Okay, oh, there you go, yeah. GPP. <laughs> okay, thank you. No, so yeah, so GPP is general physical preparedness, meaning like, hey, uh, you have to perform this task. Can you do it? Are you strong enough to do it? Are you? Do you have the work capacity, the muscular endurance to do a, any? I don't know. You know, basic task. Can you jump over a fence? Right. Sure. If you're, um, can you pick up a bag of dog food at at Walmart and carry it to your car? Yeah. Um, so like th- those, th- those are basically, so when CrossFit, um, makes their kind of sales pitch to the general public, that's kind of what they do. They're like, Hey, we're just going to get you ready to be able to do, um, ADLs activities of daily living, right? Just like normal, normal living, um, tasks. Mm-hmm. And it, it is definitely effective for, for those things. Now, is it dangerous yeah. Is it dangerous for no reason? I don't. It can be uh, because CrossFit can like CrossFit can be so many different things. And that's, that's the issue that with it, people, mm. it's like when, when people are like CrossFit nerds, like, Oh yeah, that's CrossFit. That's CrossFit. That's CrossFit. I guess, man, like I'm doing back squats and burpees. Like, does that make it CrossFit? I'm just doing those two things. Like you, it, mm. it's not, you know, it's in, right. And it that's a catch all. That's not a right. Method. Like, like, just just like, like, like brand overreach where it's like, Oh, well, we, like we, we own those movements now, you know? Um, yeah. like if you're, if you're at a gym and you're doing back squat, uh, you like, like you guys do, you know, barbell training, obviously is every person that comes to your gym, a, a power lifter? No. No, exactly. <laughs> no. Right. So that very right. emphatically, and I don't want them to be <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, like you're you're just lifting weights. Like you're right. just because you're doing powerlifting movements doesn't mean you're a power lifter. Just because yeah, you're just exercises, not a, a not a exactly. program or a, yeah, yeah. Did I answer your question? What was your question? Oh, I just was wondering what are the pros and cons across like what is it good at? What is it not so good at? Like we, just, we actually just brought you in here for rants and hot takes. It was, it was we, pretty we, good yeah. so far. You're, yeah. you're delivering. So what the you answering are. the questions irrelevant. It's, it's second yeah. Yeah. We're, we're just here to make Instagram reels. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My space. My space uh, reels. But okay, a succinct answer, Jim. You have 30 yeah. seconds. Time starts now. Pros of co- CrossFit. Highest c- pros of CrossFit. Lowest cons. Okay. Highest, highest pros of CrossFit. Um, Being confident um, in your ability to perform basic tasks outside of the gym. Um, Tasks that your life will kind of throw at you, like being ready to do things that you weren't prepared to do mentally. Like, okay, I've got to change a tire. I can do it. You know, as long as your dad touch out a change of tire. Um, but yeah, um, cons of CrossFit. Uh, the general public's perception of you <laughs> doing CrossFit. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, also, I mean, yeah, there's, there's definitely a chance that you're going to get hurt doing CrossFit without a mm-hmm. doubt. And 
just like there's a chance if you go to the Y and play pick up basketball, you, you yep. might get hurt. It's, it's right. the same idea. Right. Yep. Um, and people just can't get past that. Like, oh, you can get hurt doing CrossFit. Well, yes, a, you can get hurt bowling. Yes, you, you can get hurt without a would doubt. You, would you talk? Would you agree with me in like that over optimization is never that good? Like in terms of like lifting, right? I often tell mm-hmm. people, you know, they get their squat up to four hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, your case, five hundred pounds. My case, five hundred yeah. pounds. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, should I squat six hundred pounds? Does my life get better? Am I able no. to do more things? Right. No, right? By, by far, no. And so for everyone, there's like a number, right? And I feel like yeah. that number's unclear. I actually think it's more of a mindset of like, hey, I'm always trying to be as strong as I can. But like when you get into over-optimization, which a lot of times like in powerlifting becomes with steroid abuse, and it's like, mm-hmm. why did this guy, uh, you know, rip his quad? Well, because he's on a bunch of stuff and he's squatting yeah. 150 pounds and like his body's not made to do that. Of course he did it. And in CrossFit... Yeah. I mean, I don't know if the steroids are there like they are in powerlifting, but for sure, like over, I mean, I've definitely, there's, there's performance enhancing drugs, but yeah, I, but you see over optimization, like, Hey, you don't actually, you know, handstand walking is a bad example, but that's why I always think with cross. Like you don't need to be able to walk a mile on your hands. Like you, you, no. you can get through life no. without it just as you don't need to squat 800 pounds. And so I yeah. feel like over optimization often like, leads to the injuries. Cause I mean, I always tell people, Hey, I found CrossFit in 2008. I followed the guy who's a preacher man now, uh, out of NorCal, Greg Amundsen, right? That was the first account I found. You remember him? He's a preacher now. Yeah. He's a preacher now. I think in Florida, actually, maybe you should go to his church. Hmm. Really? Yeah. But he's a preacher now, but yeah, I followed Greg Amundsen. He was what a police officer, a firefighter, police officer, I believe. Yeah. But he's he had like cop, a great, yeah. a great friend time. Right. And mm-hmm. I followed that guy. And then I was like, this is cool. And then in 2008, yeah. I went to work to DC and I joined Potomac CrossFit. And it was one of the first CrossFit gyms on the yeah. East Coast. Mm-hmm. And Rob Wolf came, Mark Ripito yeah. came. And it was like, hey, come in. We're doing two barbell lifts. It'd be like, you're going to squat, you're going to press, or you're going to bench, you're going to deadlift. And it was mm-hmm. always, it wasn't like su- it wasn't like a linear progression, but it was like, it's heavy and it's hard. And then it was yeah. like, now we're going to do the wad. What's the wad? 20 box jumps. 20 push-ups, run around the building three times, three rounds. Like very yeah. attainable stuff. I was like, yep. this is cool. I get strong. Exactly. Now I get my conditioning in. It's over. I love CrossFit. Mm-hmm. Fast forward like four years. I moved to Raleigh. I go to Christmas Abbott's gym. And it's like, mm-hmm. today's, really pretty. Hand, yeah, today's handstand <laughs> holds. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, like why? <laughs> like, this doesn't right. make any sense. And then they started getting like, and, and that's where the sport part of the brand came in too, where it's like, yeah. Hey, we have to, how do we basically now we have a bunch of athletes coming in. I mean, I remember when I could power clean tw- 225 under your coaching. Mm-hmm. And then later I went to CrossFit gyms like, Whoa, you can power clean 225. <laughs> yeah. And now it's like, dude, it's every nothing. guy that CrossFit <laughs> can snatch 315. Like you yeah. are nothing. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I feel like the over optimization is like what hurt that and what hurts like a lot of things, right? I think that that's my problem with power. Mm-hmm. That's the problem as a as a general barbell coach. Like I would say what I try to sell to people is like, hey, I'm just here trying to make you to be more able to do the stuff you want and be stronger mm-hmm. than you are now. Like that's all I yeah. care about. But what they picture in their mind is 1,000 pound squatter, you right? 1,200 pound sumo deadlift. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. I don't care about that. Like, hello, 40 year old lady. I just want you to deadlift right. 185. <laughs> You'll be fine. Yeah. But the over optimization on in the extremes, just like that's all people think of. Do you think that that came from like the commercialization of the sport or? I, I think so. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, because when, when you see, and, and that's, that's the issue with the, the three concepts, right? Yeah. Like the, the brand, the sport, and and the methodology is people see the sport on TV and they think that's what CrossFit is. Like, no, that's the sport of CrossFit, right? That's not what we're doing at my gym. I've got, I've got uh, today, right? I, I have um, my 1030 class. I had a, a nine-year-old little girl in my 1030 class. Oh, that's and awesome. And then in my, in my 12 o'clock class, I had a 65 year old guy, 
right? And so, like, and then literally everything in between those mm-hmm. those two people I, I've got in there. So, like, there's, I I'm not going to have that nine year old little girl throw a bunch of weight on her back. I'm not going to have that 65 year old woman try to walk on her hands. Like those things aren't necessary. That's not why they're coming there. They're not yeah. coming there to compete in CrossFit. And, and that's the issue is people think because I've seen, it's like, you don't watch, uh, you know, the Super Bowl and think, well, I can't play football. I, I shouldn't even own a football. I can't throw a football because I'm not going to be in the Super Bowl. Well, yeah. You, you, you're not, you're just, you're like every other person. You're just a regular guy or a regular girl. Like it's okay. You can own a football. You can, you can own a barbell. You can use a barbell. Just because you're not going to be, you know, a super strong person doesn't mean that you're not allowed to participate and, and just be a part of it. Because I'll tell you what, like, aside from, you know, family and, and relationships, friends, things like that, training with weights has been one of the most joyous parts of my existence as a human being. I mean, I being able to put a bar on my back and, and feel a barbell in my hands pretty much almost every single day of my life is, uh, I'm lucky. Like I'm so Mm. lucky that, that I found something that makes me so happy and it's, and it's so simple And, and like, bro, how lucky am I that I'm not like, um, I don't know, like, I'm not like a whiskey connoisseur. Maybe you guys are, that's fine. Um, but like, I don't, <laughs> but I don't care about it. Like, I don't care about those things. I, I just care about this little thing, this little area of life where I get to try really hard at something. And, you know, I enjoy other things, but like, if I'm going on vacation, I need to find a gym I, 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 because I, I want to I do it. And that's bec- it's not because I've got these goals and I've, I've got to hit these goals. Like I, I like lifting weights. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's I'm lucky, man. It's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool yes. that, that I found something like that. I made it my job. I made it my existence. Yeah. It's really yeah. cool. All yeah. right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a round, a round Robin and we yeah. just want to, we just want a hot take and they're going to ask you anything. It might be, what do you think about women's basketball? It might be uh, who knows, Mine's going to okay. be a little personal based off a of personal interaction with you. And I just have a question, but yeah, we just want like 20, 30 seconds of like what you think. That's about hard for me, Grant. Clearly. I know. It's, I know. I'm telling you I'm 20, 20 30, 30 second guy. I'm telling you 20, 30 <laughs> seconds so that I get two to three minutes. Uh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, 20, 30 seconds. But <laughs> we'll just, we're each going to ask you a question. It might be a little random and then you just answer to the best of your ability. So I'll start when I was at your gym Taught me mm-hmm. a bunch of stuff. One, you always call me a weirdo when I walked in. Yeah, On kettlebell yeah. swings, you would tell me, this is mom, this is dad, yeah. and the kettlebell is the swing. Mom and yep. dad are going to push you on the swing. Don't use Damn your right. arm. Mom and dad are going to push you on the swing. I yeah. use that to this day. You taught me kettlebell swings. Bunch of stuff. I'll never forget my deadlift PR that I set in your gym, 445. I We had an artillery training exercise, so you met me there at 4 a.m. in the morning. And I've thought about this later as a gym owner. See, look at me. I'm going over my 30 seconds for my question. I thought about as a gym, a gym owner later, I was like, man, I don't know what clients I would meet at the gym at 4 a.m. But you did because I was like, hey, I want to train. And I'm supposed to, you have me on this program. I'm supposed to PR my deadlift. The only time Uh I can do it this day is 4 a.m. You're like, I'll be there. And I did 445. And I remember that. Anyway. Yeah. You also one time told me, and I wrote about this in an article once, I was squatting and I was like anti belt. I was like, I don't yeah. want to use a belt. And you were like, go over there and grab a belt. And I went over there and grabbed a belt and I grabbed a four inch double ply leather belt. It was Navy blue, mm-hmm. maybe purple in color. And you yeah. said, I have had that belt since I was 16. Yeah. And you told me to put it on and you helped me, you know, put it tight enough. And you taught me how to like Valsalva. Do uh-huh. you still have that belt? I still have that belt. Nice. Nice. That's I still cool. have it. I'm on the very last prong of it, but I, I can still squeeze into that thing. I, uh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's not necessarily functional because it's so freaking tight that I, I can barely push out against it. So yeah. I don't, but, but I definitely have it. And I, I like, you know how women try on their prom dress every few yeah. years to make sure it still fits. 
it's the same. The this same is the way kind of thing. belt you wore to prom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So, yeah, I, so, I do. Yeah. Good. So, before I kick over to Jeff, text me a photo of the belt tomorrow when you're in the gym. I'd love to see For it. For sure. All yeah. Right, you go. yeah. All right, Jeff, hit him. That's a great story. Uh, mine's way less sentimental, but it's more topical <laughs> to what we were talking about before you jumped on the call. Uh, solar eclipses. What's your what's your take on those? Um, yeah, I I really wanted to care about it. Like I was, <laughs> I was like, everybody was talking about. I was like, yeah, man, solar eclipse. I'll be in on the the hype. And then um, the lady next door to the gym had these glasses, and I put them on. At, like I was in the middle of training, um, because that's usually when I try. I usually train between like three and and four thirty. Um. So I put on the glasses and I looked at the eclipse. I was like, yo, that's cool. And then went on living. And, and then, then I just like, oh, went yeah. and then I just went back into the gym. I, <laughs> we were doing front squats today. So I was doing some front squats. So I was like, all right, I saw it. I did it. Um, so, but you know what was pretty cool? Um, I don't know if this is, I was talking about this a lot at the gym today. Um, dude, I talk so freaking much in front of my damn classes that it is, you would think that after 15 years of owning a CrossFit gym, you could finish a class in an hour. I, I barely do it. I, I hardly ever freaking do it because <laughs> I stand tough. up in front of. It's it's impossible, man. I I say too much shit. I I just I stand up like yo. I got all these people. They gotta listen to me, and <laughs> I'm just gonna say some things, and they're gonna hopefully get a little bit out of it. And most of the time, the people that have been coming for a while, like ah, they just literally walk away as I'm spouting <laughs> off whatever nonsense. But I was talking about this article that I saw um, in, in a newspaper. And uh, it, was, uh, it was from like 1979. And it said, uh, full solar eclipse, next solar eclipse will be 2024. So as like pretty cool seeing that date, like on, on the cover of a newspaper from 1979, like, man, this is the future, right? Like this is the future. I guess we're, cool. I guess it's no matter when, you, when, yeah, it's like no matter when, it's always the, the future. Like no matter what day it is, it's the future. <laughs> That's deep. It's That's never deep. not the future. It's All never right. not the future. Kick it over to Trey. So that CrossFit class just ended, and now we're starting yeah. the next one. Trey, <laughs> okay, <go> next, class. <laughs> next class. All right, Summer Olympics coming up, right? I believe this yeah. summer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you? Do you think hot take? Do you find it insulting that table tennis is in the Summer Olympics but not a CrossFit? Uh no. No, no. I I don't. <laughs> I I don't I don't think CrossFit will ever be in the Olympics. Um, really? Oh. Yeah, I I, yeah. I and it, I I'm not obviously I like it. Mm -hmm. Um it's just too all over the place, man. Like uh, the like the Olympic Games has you know, there's very set protocols for whatever. Sport. Yeah. I mean, there's surfing now. I don't know how the hell you judge surfing. Like, <laughs> they, like what the, yeah. What they I should mean, do is just have a CrossFit player play every single event. Yeah. That, I mean, that <laughs> actually would be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, That's I don't know. I mean, it's, I, when I first started doing CrossFit, I thought, like, oh man, someday CrossFit's going to be in the Olympics. When I first started competing in powerlifting, I thought, powerlifting would someday be in the Olympics, but the people that run the sports, they don't do that. Like there's so, you know, in powerlifting, there's, I don't know how many federations there are, gazillion yeah. federations. I think so, it's a uh, 598. Really? No, I mean, it's something uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. you also would have believed 1064. <laughs> Like yeah. there's no like it's 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 insane. Like it doesn't even yeah. make sense. It's always I'm, in flux. I hold this record in this powerlifting federation right. in this state wearing this thing on this day. Like it's insane. Yeah, it's silly. Anyway, and th that's what keeps the sport from being taken seriously. And it's yeah. the same thing with CrossFit. Like there's so much goofy stuff that they always try to throw in there that it's just not. I don't think it's a feasible sport to have. You know, mm. an international competition. That, I mean. The CrossFit Games is an international competition. I don't know. I just don't think it'll yeah. ever line up. So God yeah. bless table tennis. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, PJ. All right. So I've used this one before, but I feel like I have to. So you're in Florida. I lived in Fl Florida for a few years. Is yeah. Florida the best state in the country or is it not? What are your thoughts on Florida? Man, mm. I've lived in a couple of different places. I lived in Oklahoma, Texas, Pennsylvania, California, 
Hawaii and now Florida. Wow. And I really like this place. I really nice. do. I, I, I can't see myself living in another place. Like I just don't picture myself leaving here. There's a lot of things that are pretty frustrating about it, you know, like traffic, but, yeah. but, but here's the thing. Like if you live in a place that that's great, there's going to be traffic. Like if right. you, if, yeah. if you live in a, in a, in a dorky place, then nobody's going to, there's no, nobody's going to be there. There's not going to be traffic. Right. I'm not saying that like dorky if there's place. no traffic in your town, you live in a dorky town. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> that's, no, I get it. that's what you're saying. We understand. That's, what you're that's the way I took that's it. That's what you said. <laughs> dorks. Yeah. Dorks. You're that's a right. Dorks don't listen dork. to this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> cool guys only. You got yeah. traffic, you're a dork. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait, so wh where are you in Florida? Uh, so I live. Probably um, would have been an important question an hour ago. Okay. Um, <laughs> so there's Tampa and St. Petersburg, and then there's yep, the yep. Sunshine Skyway Bridge that runs south of St. Petersburg, and I'm directly on the south side of the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. So yeah, okay, I feel like yeah. you're closer to last guest. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to back yeah. Florida guests. Yeah, back to back, back Florida guests. Yeah. Wait, he was yeah. from Fort Lauderdale. Naples. Naples. No, Naples. Naples. Okay, so that's north, that's north like another hour and a half south from from okay. me. But Gulf Coast, we've got two Gulf Coast Floridians. Gulf Coast yeah. Floridians. So basically, yeah. Alabamians. Yeah, yeah, close enough. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Jim, you you can tell we got a high tech operation going on here. There's yeah. like a soundboard. These lights go off every now and then. There's yeah, it's like pretty horns cool. Over my head. I like the uh, horns. He, yeah, thank you. He's got a laptop. I have wow. a microphone. Wow. This stuff doesn't happen free. So yeah. we have sponsors and our sponsors are very important to us. When I say sponsors, yeah, come on. I, mean, I want to hear about I, these sponsors. I mean, paying sponsors. And when I say sponsors, I mean, sponsor and our sponsor yeah. is BW tax LLC. So Tell what we like them. to do to our guests is give you a couple nuggets of information. And then if you were a 1950s ad man, you read, you know, you take that information and then you tell people why they should go to BW Tax. So we're going to round tax. robin really quick. BW Tax, you always end it with bwtaxllc.com. I know it's a lot to take in, but here's what I'll tell oh you about boy. BW. Just get as close as you can. Yeah. Here's yeah. what I'll tell you about BW You're Tax. Great. Today's April 8th, which means that next Monday's April 15th, which yeah. means that by the time you listen to this podcast, you have three days to do your taxes. Mm. And if you're in a pinch and you think it's too late before you go to H and R block, you want, you want to get someone that actually cares about your taxes. That's my nugget. I'll kick it to Trey, then Jeff, then Jordy. Mm, BW tax LLC.com located in Greenville, South, Carolina, South Carolina, Greenville, South yeah. Carolina, but, but you don't have to be in South oh, Carolina oh, oh. to use them. Yeah. Yeah. You can use them anywhere. Anywhere. All right. All right, Jeff. Yeah, you just got to know they're the tax experts. They can handle your state tax return. Well, I guess you're in Florida, so don't need to worry about no that No state one, tax return there. Yeah. I mean, they, they, yeah. they, I mean, they can handle it. Let's just say, if you said, hey, do my Florida state taxes, they would knock it out of the park. They could do your federal taxes. <laughs> they know all the ins and outs of the tax laws and all the complicated things that the government has set up to try to trip us up and, and take our hard-earned money, but not BW tax. They'll help you hang on to that money and get you a good return. Yeah, mm -hmm. and when you when you call them, they'll answer. You'll talk to a real person. Yeah. So with that information, just like tell the listeners why they should use BW Tax. We know well, you're I mean, the spot. The thing that I've always liked about BWTaxLLC.com is that they are a, a smaller company, and and smaller companies care more in general. There's there's not a hierarchy of people that are telling you. Um, you know, make more money, make more money from our clients. They they want you to make money. That's why that's why you use them, because when you use them, they're going to give you the tools to get the most money back from the government that generally takes all of our stuff. But it's their it's their mission. It's their job to get as much money back from the government and put it into the, the pockets of hardworking Americans. Dag we Dag salute you. Dag that was, a, that was a God great, bless America. That was a great ad read. <laughs> so uh, we 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 save good ad reads. Um, and so before you leave, 
And then I'm going to yeah. thank you in a second. I'm just going to give you an example of one of the ad reads that we like. I feel um, like yours is out there, my man. Yeah, oh, yours, yeah. I think oh, you're yeah. going to make the we have we have nine buttons here out of like five ad reads. We've filled two and I'm going to play this one. Absolutely. BW Tax. I love them. They're based out of South Carolina, but they can do taxes for you anywhere. They have CPAs. They have the team that you need to cut through all the red tape. They did trays taxes, got them in and got them out. Uh, and we got to mention that whenever you're calling them, don't think you're going to be talking to some chat GPT, some bot. You're not going to be put on hold mm -hmm. for 25 minutes and then told we're going to call you back and then end up at church when they finally do and not be able to answer because you're in communion with the people that in are around you and how people around you stop. When you make the call, they're going to answer BW Tax LLC from South Carolina to everywhere. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. Yours is up there, dude. Yours, yours is up there. I think you're in a button that once we put a music bed to it, it's it, it's right there. Um, Wait, what's Jim. a good what's a good gym song to put put behind it? Oh yeah, Jim. Do you have a song Ooh. that you want us? Anything come to mind? Oh, when I said Jim, I meant J I M, not G Y. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I I, I don't want. That's why we have a producer. They just yeah. figure it out. We'll figure no, it you, out. you choose. Yeah. You choose the yeah. music. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. So, All right. so Jim, Blue foxes. Yeah. I can't tell you how cool it is, particularly for me and Jeff, because we came to your gym twelve mm. years ago. Dan O'Connell came there, Huang yep. came there, all those dudes. Like, yeah. and we've all remembered you throughout our Marine career. Oh yeah. So like, I, I, I have a picture in front of CrossFit Havoc in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. I know that you took the gym to Florida, but to me, that's yeah. where that th place is. For sure. Um, cool to have you on. You know, like three years ago when you came to the Arnold and yeah. I had a booth, like we had a moment, like we didn't that cry, was awesome. but it was close. It was, it was I, really I think, close. And that was awesome, man. Dude, yeah. let me tell you something, Grant. I'm, and I'm, I'm dead serious here. I like seeing, seeing you do all of the things that you're doing in the strength community and like all of the, all, all of the knowledge that you're spreading just about how to, how to use a barbell, how to use this like magical tool that, that you've discovered and that I've discovered and you're that you helping helped me discover. Yeah. But you're, you're freaking doing it, man. Like you're, you're doing the thing that, that people set out to do and like you've found a way to do it. And I, I'm, I, I don't want to say I'm proud of you because it'll be, but I, but I am, but can I say that? Can I yeah, say you that can I'm say proud that. of you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're like, you're yeah. way older than me, dude. I haven't okay, even hit my right. strength hey. peak yet. I, I think, I just think it's freaking awesome. I'm, I'm every time I see you come up on whatever, even with my, platform, even, with, even with my mustache. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I was wondering if that was what you brought I, up. I avoided that topic on purpose. No, seriously, Jim, that means a lot to me. Uh, like, seriously, I, I really do appreciate it. But I mean, Good. I'm telling you, the fact that you're here, there's a podcast and Jeff's here makes it even more special. I enjoy oh, yeah, PJ, man. but like, it, it's cool. Um, we want to like, for what we can do, help you. So where do the people find you? If they've listened to this and they're like, wow, this Yo. dude's on to something about tax help, the future of CrossFit, <laughs> yeah. lifting yeah. weights. Is. Like, do you want them to go to your website? Do you yeah, want them to go sure, to your man. Instagram? Like, what, like, where can the people find Big Jim? Yeah, so, I mean, CrossFitHavoc.com, that's our website. Um, mm. I, uh, I, just, I just got 1,000 followers on Instagram. Guys, it's a really big deal. Like yeah, huge well, life changing. I mean, four four digits. I was I've been waiting. Like it's like when I hit my five hundred pound back squat within a few days after that, I hit a thousand Instagram followers, and, wow. and my life's Wait, been so it's two x. So if you could squat twenty five hundred pounds, you'd have five thousand followers. Wow, <laughs> yeah, man, that's I like that's math life's checks been, math my checks life's out been incredible since then. Yeah, so um, <laughs> but no, yeah. <laughs> CrossFitHavoc.com. Um, What's your Instagram handle? Uh, Jim Denofa. It's really uh, yeah. creative. D -E -N -O -F -A. Straight to the point. I, I will yeah. say, if you've liked a little bit of Jim's hot takes and rants, he has rants Some on good mustaches. Ones. Uh, what, was yeah. the what about tails? Sh yeah. shrimp, the shrimp, shrimp? The shrimp tails one was shrimp great. Tails, shrimp tails. What, yeah. they do, what, what, what America, Italians in America are doing to your pasta <laughs> 
It's, it's ridiculous. It's, a travis- <laughs> it's, 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 it's worse than vaccines. It's awful. <laughs> it's completely terrible. They're getting you. Uh, so if you want some random, I won't call them random because they're very important, but to some oh, people yeah. it may seem random, uh, listen in. And uh, despite me having a mustache, thanks for calling in, Jim. Yeah, yeah. man. Uh, this was, this was awesome guys. Seriously. Thank you so Hell much yeah. for inviting me in. Um, Let's do it again sometime. Yeah, for sure. I'd love it. I'd love it. All right. Thanks for joining, dude. Oh, yeah. All right, boys. See you. Appreciate it, man. See ya. Thanks, yeah, dude. Have a good one. Dude, that was he's good. great. Loved it. He's great. Dude, good yeah. guess, man. Dude, yeah. Good yeah. find. Good. So Solid good. Guess. It's good, dude. Yeah. Good, dude. Good, I, dude. Good, good dude. dude. Good dude. Good dude. Yeah, good dude. Uh, so here's the way I see it. One, UConn's playing Purdue right now, which is a Ooh. testament to us for saying, hey, rain, sleet, or snow, the show must go. Right. But also, Jeff, you're the director of slides. I think it's half time. Ten, man. I think we, I think we had ten minutes. Like okay. Like, what I mean, I think there's only one topic to go with, and there's that's only talking one. about the women's national championship. The Lady Gamecocks taking oh. over the hardware. Perfect season, undefeated. Were you nervous at down. the in the first half? Oh, you guys are talking to me? You guys think oh, yeah, you, you, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> I mean, you might have a couple things. The number about. one, the uh, number one ladies fan. So I actually wasn't that nervous. One, because South Carolina stats are to be the best second half team all year. Uh I mean, don't get me wrong, I did not like a 10 nothing start, but it was nothing like as a Patriots fan, as a Red Sox fan, as a Gamecock male football players fan, like I actually was always like, oh, they got this. And then when they came back from 11 0 in the first quarter and tied it up, and then at the half, when Caitlin Clark only scored one point or maybe two points in the second quarter, I was like, oh, we're good. Um, so I wasn't that nervous, but yeah, I, th- I thought it was a great game. Uh, hmm. Yeah, that was fun fun to see. I like that it was like lockdown defense. It was amazing. Like just put a hand in her face. Like uh, just literally put a hand in her face and like she's done. Um I still think she's an amazing player, but it was amazing oh, yeah. how they they shut her down. So 18 points in the first quarter and then average 4 points per quarter. You have to um, tell you have to tell Diana like this is not a normal thing for a sports fan. Like oh, I'm going to hop on this bandwagon and then like a month later we're the best. Yeah. That's not, that's not normal. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I she actually like hopped on while they were the best and then just kept going to oh, okay. the greatness. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I will say I've taken her to four Gamecock games and they've all been abysmal losses. And she was like, why do oh, really? you like this school? <laughs> and uh, and so that's why when we went to the SEC tournament game for basketball, she was like, I love these Gamecocks. I was like, me too. Um, but oh, yeah. 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 Well, what do you uh, think? Do they, they run it back again? How much of the how many players are coming back? Uh, I guess so maybe too soon to tell, but Crockpot. Yeah, go ahead, Trey. Is Crockpot coming back? What's your name? Crockpot's coming back. Yeah, nice. I'm, I'm trying nice. to wait. I'm trying to wait when to ask her to come in the OK Pod, but Crockpot's coming back. Um, I think honestly, everyone but uh, Camila Cardola is should should be coming back. Uh, I think that's I think not fair. The, I think the question is, does Don Staley come back. Um, I mean, I don't know why she wouldn't, but like, why would I, you? Yeah. I think that, the fact that, the, that the five starters mm-hmm. this year were completely different than all five starters last year tell you like the sauce there. Not that they yeah. don't have good players coming in, but like, I think that's the question. But um, I mean, I, she's still under contract, so I assume she'll be back. But yeah, maybe they <laughs> run it back. But it was it was good. So I have a question to kind of segue. One. Did you guys all watch that game? I know Jordy did because he texted me right at the end. Trey, Jeff, he didn't. I was keeping it. up with it. I didn't get a chance to watch it, though. Okay. Yeah, I was working. Are you keeping up with UConn or Purdue right now? It's halftime right now. Mm. Only because I brought it up. That Did you know that? What, that it's halftime? I knew they were playing, <laughs> but. Okay, okay, okay. Dude, I was, um, really, I was really into that guess, man. I was like, everything he said, I'm like, great. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was great. So, Gamecocks are champs. Jim, Jim DeNofo remains king. Yeah. Um, 
Any, any anything we need to cover before? I mean, I, Man, if, I let's, open, if I open up my fishing story, that could, we I could go for an hour. Oh, I, I say let's I push wanna... let's push that to. Was it good? Yeah, I guess. Do you have a good time? Yeah, I'll put it to you this way: It was cool. About eighteen months, oh, no, last year, last April, my brother was up in North Carolina taking his girls to a camp. Texted me, was like, "Hey, do you want to meet up for a hike?" I was like, "Yeah." I met him somewhere. This was right after we moved here. We hiked for six miles and he was holding something in his hand and he had looked up the hike and there was supposed to be like a stream. And so he had this like fly fishing stuff with him. And that was when I first got the bug. Cause he was like, Oh, nice. oh I was hoping we we're going to hike into this like sh- stream and then I was going to fish. And I was like, wait, what? And he's like, yeah, well like I have a family, I have four girls. And like, what I like to do is like, they all like to hike. They don't necessarily like to fish. So we then go on a hike and then all of a sudden Smart. there's water and it's like, what must I do oh. to fish? Oh, just cast. And so that was the plan, but we never found water. And like Diana likes to tease my oldest brother. She's like, oh, that's six mile hike to nowhere. And um, cause there was no water, but that was like when it like first trickled my mind. So anyway, so him coming down, we went out uh, the first day with the guide was awesome. My brother caught, you know, fly fishing guides, Harris, Harris Fly Fishing out of Greenville, South Carolina, potential sponsor, but they speak in absolutes. So Jeremy pulls this big fish, which I posted on Instagram. I think Jeff and Trey both commented too. That's a good fish. And he catches it and he goes, how big is it? And the guy goes, 21 inches. And Jeremy goes, biggest fish I've ever caught. And I'm like, so was it the biggest fish you ever caught? He goes, I don't know. The last time I caught a big fish, the guy in Montana said it was 20 inches. And this guy says 21 <laughs> inches. So I had him send photos and we like compared and it was like real close. Um, but I was okay. super pumped that he came down to fish and like caught what caught a monster like, may or Dang. may not have been the biggest fish he's ever caught down to the ounces. I think he caught like 15 fish. I caught over 10. Like, I mean, it's, it is like, once you catch like five, like you just, you actually really do lose count. Mm-hmm. So we had a great day. And the second day we went out, it was awesome. And he was like teaching me some stuff. Cause he fishes a whole different style, right? Like I think more like what Jeff does, like still water doing the swing, like, you know, dry casting. And I like, oh, yeah. have a, I've only fished like big water, high sticking, fast water, like feeding, like it was just, it was just completely different. So it was interesting. So we did some of that and we had a great day and we like talked about a bunch of stuff. And then it was like, it was like four o'clock and we hadn't caught a fish. I'd had one that I hooked, fought and he busted off. And I was like, man. And then Jeremy actually felt bad. Cause he was like, I suck. Like I've like the one that got you into fly fishing. I've been doing it for 10 years. We haven't caught a fish. And I was like, Hey man, like I've come to this river, the Chatuga a few times everyone fishes like the bridge. The bridge is where the truck is. Like, let's just hike back and fish, fish the bridge and we'll leave at five 30. So we walked down to the bottom of the bridge at literally five 15. I'm like five 30. We're leaving. I cast twice. Boom. Fish catch it. And we're like, yeah, we're not stunk or skunked. <laughs> he takes a photo and then he's like, Oh, cool. Let me tell you this swing thing. And he's like showing me something like third cast. He catches a fish. He's like, the bite's on. I was like, we're leaving. He's like, what am I? We're leaving right now. We're leaving on a high. We both just caught a fish. We didn't get skunk. Let's get out of here. But yeah, it was, it was a good trip. But what I will tell you that Trey will like, we got in at the bridge and there was like two guys like 40 meters down. And so all day when there had been people, we had like avoided them. And then we get in there and Jeremy goes, oh, we're totally high hole this guy. And I go, yeah, he's real casting. And he's like, what? I'm like, he's a spin caster and scented worms. I don't care about this guy. And like I do my first cast, that guy catches a fish. He hooks it, pulls it up, trout this long, unhooks it, throws it on the bank. What kind of dirt bag <laughs> keeps the fish? And Jeremy looks at me and goes, oh, I don't feel bad at all. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> let's keep fishing. <laughs> this guy keeps his Not fish. Not a conservationist. Oh, my oh gosh. gosh. You're not allowed to eat them? Oh, boys can have a, a little bit of fun. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Never catch a 21 inch if you take all the 12 inches out of there. Am I right? That's right. Um, yeah. Trey, you always shut us down. And every week you get better. 
Mm. Take us in for a wow. fine wine. A fine What's wine. the uh, what episode are we on? Zero one five. Zero one five. One five, as we say. Everybody, just want to thank you for listening. As always, this has been the OK, okay. podcast. You can listen to PJ Grant, Hefe. Uh, like thank our guest Jim for coming on. What a great time that we had. Like, thank our sponsors, BW Tax, as always. You literally have one week. One week. I to just checked my calendar. Yeah. To file your taxes or file an extension. I don't know how to do that. Guess who does? BW, BW, Tax. BW Tax. Give them a call. Uh, you can find us on all major social media platforms LinkedIn, uh, Hofspace, MySpace. We're uh, too, too we're social. Too social. It. Have we been making vines? <laughs> Is that still a thing? I don't Dude, know. We're huge on Vine. Big we're huge vine. on Vine. Follow us on Vine. But the easiest way, easiest way is go to www.theokpodcast.com. Find all the links there. Coach, did I miss anything? No, you're good. Great job. All right. Thanks again for listening. 